hands to heaven. Give thanks to God for all these testimonies, all the miracles, signs, and wonders that God has done in our midst. Let's go ahead and tell Him thank you. Give Him praise, give Him glory, give Him honor, give Him all adoration. Blessed be His name forever. In Jesus' most wonderful name, we have given thanks. God is so awesome in our midst. It's wonderful. No one can take the glory. It's very humbling. The testimony is happening here. We don't take them lightly. We don't take them for granted. I did nothing. You did nothing. He did it all. So to him we give all the glory. We thank him for doing it. It's a proof that God is the one confirming his word with signs and everywhere you see signs, God is there. It confirms his word. That kind of person get accident and then he couldn't walk. Just one healing school is working. Are you getting what I'm now? He near vanishing without surgery. That is not man. It is God. God is the doer of all of them. One more time, consciously tell God, thank you. Lord, we thank you for all the miracles, signs, and wonders. For all the testimonies in our midst, we say thank you. We are grateful to you. We don't take things for granted. We don't take it lightly. We appreciate you, mighty God. To you be all the glory and praise. In Jesus' most wonderful name, we have given thanks. It is what you expect you will experience. If you expect nothing, you aim at nothing, then you get nothing. I want to have great expectation in this service because all your problems will be of the past. You are not going to carry any trouble to tomorrow. It's a many of the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord deliver them from all. Today, God will deliver you from every evil. Today is a day of vengeance. Lord, today, oh God, to whom vengeance belongs, show thyself. Show yourself in my favor. Let your vengeance walk in my favor. Go ahead and talk to God in the name of Jesus. Oh God, to whom vengeance belongs, show thyself. Render the word to the proud. Show thyself in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' most wonderful name. Sing it alone to that young man. Don't stop singing. That young man who came to testify still has pains. God healed him by taking him off. He said he accidentally even two people's life. So they cut it off. But God saved him, but he couldn't work. During the healing school, God raised him up. But you can still see him limping. What are you, young man? You see, I have some pains. I said that two people's life, you should know that that was not an understand. You, you show the picture of where you were before and who you are now. Pass the stand here. I'm not the healer. Hold, give me microphone to hold. Hold the microphone to yourself. You know that I'm not the healer. Take the microphone to your left hand. Put it towards your mouth. Lift your right hand this way. As the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Touch my legs. Touch my legs. Give me perfect health. Give me perfect health. And soundness. Soundness. 
soundness. Soundness. Sound health. No pain. No pain. You are the giver of life. You are, the, you are the giver of life. You are the deliverer of life. You are the giver of life. You are the giver of life. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Move that leg, you'll be shocked. Move that leg that used to pain you. Move it. Just do like this. Do, don't bother. Move. You'll be shocked. What will happen? Move. No pain. Move. No pain. No pain. No pain at all. No pain. No pain. Thank you, Jesus. No pain. No pain. No pain. No pain. Thank you, Jesus. Lift your voice and worship him. your right hand to heaven as a sign of surrender say Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. I thank you, I thank you. For, healing your son. for healing your son now in the name of Jesus you are the giver of life I ask that you touch me which area do you want him to touch you talk to him he will touch you talk to him you will be shocked he will touch you just talk to him as a person Holy Spirit touch me touch my brain to be intelligent Touch my body to be made whole. Touch my body. Touch my life. Ask him to touch your business. He will touch your business. Ah, Holy Ghost, touch me. He touched me and made me whole. Holy Spirit, touch me. Touch me completely from the crown of my head to my feet. In the name of Jesus, touch me. Touch me completely. In the name of Jesus. And I know, and I know, know what joy that feeds my soul. Something happened. Something happened. Something happened.
Holy Spirit, touch everyone all over the globe. Make us whole. In Jesus' mighty name. Let the words I will speak now be encapsulated by your power. Let it bring deliverance, healing. Let every purpose of your world be fulfilled in our lives. Vow to give every glory. In Jesus' mighty name. You may be sitting with a hand to Jesus. Say so thank you, Holy Spirit. The message this morning is enjoying while I was we were singing. I'm not saying it to, fl- to just get you excited. No means towards the service. How many of you want your mind to spark? Towards the service, I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit to touch your mind. He said, tell them what I will do on Thursday. This mind has to be creative. As what? Your mind has to be creative. Are you kidding me? On Thursday, prepare fast on Thursday. Don't come without fasting. And then prepare your heart for Thursday. There will be a strange impartation for creativity. Are you going to now? All students, make sure you're part of Thursday service. Every adult, Thursday service. All enjoying all round comfort, part three. Enjoying all round comfort, part three. God is a two sided God. God kills and he makes alive. First Samuel chapter 2 verse 6. It's said, the Lord that kill it and make it alive. People know the aspect of God that he blesses. They don't know the aspect of God that he causes. God is a blesser God and God is also a causer God. God can kill, God can make alive. Many people don't know that aspect of God. First Samuel chapter 2 said, the Lord kill it and make it what? He said, they bring it down to the grave and lift it up. So he can kill some people and lift them up. And lift others up. Today, whoever is after us will go down. Yeah. Those who say, thank God for this person, they will go up. Yeah. Now, hear this and hear me well, people of God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, they all cost. Read your Bible. God was the one who caused the serpent. True? And God said to Abraham in Genesis 12, 12 and 3, He said, I will bless thee and that bless thee, and I will cause him that cause thee. Is that your Bible? God said, anyone that bless Abraham, I will bless. But anyone that dear you, I will cause. Is that true? Glory to God. And Galatians 3, verse 29. The Bible declares, if you be Christ, then you Abraham's what? Seed. So it means he has according to the promise. So whatever he said to Abraham, he said to us. So it means anyone that blesses me, God will bless. Whoever says it will cost me, God will cause. So God causes, and Jesus came on the earth. He caused the fig tree. Mark 11, you know the story. Glory to God. If you read 12 to 14, he was the one that caused the fig tree and 20 to 23. Then God, the Holy Ghost, also causes. You remember Peter in Acts chapter 5? The Elima, um, Ananias and Sapphira. Then Paul, by the power of the Holy Ghost, in Acts chapter 13, verse 11, filled with the Holy Ghost, caused Elima the sorcerer. So the Holy Ghost also what? Causes. Acts 13, verse 11. It says, Now behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee, and thou shalt be blind, not seeing the sun for a season. Immediately there fell on him, the darkness and the. And, and they said, the whole, Paul filled with the what? Holy Ghost, it costs to the Holy Ghost, it costs Elimas the sorcerer. Now, today, by the power of the Holy Ghost, everyone diverting people with demonic forces, they are caused in the name of Jesus. God causes, Jesus caused, Holy Ghost caused. So, don't think that it's say, Oh, God does not cause, it's a lie. Whoever tell that they read the Bible, Nahum chapter 1, verse 2. Nahum chapter 1 verse 2. God is jealous. The Lord revenge it. The Lord revenge it. And is furious. The Lord will take vengeance on, on, on his adversaries. And he reserved the Lord for his enemies. In Exodus chapter 3 verse 22. The B part. He said I will be an enemy unto thy enemies. Helmaru Brigadiaga. Le Krokro Zakata. An adversary unto thy what? Adversaries. Whoever calls himself an enemy, say with me, my God will be their enemies. He will be an adversary unto our adversaries. Now in the name of Jesus, anyone that is our enemy, God will fight them. Yeah. If you are expecting something to happen right now, let your amen confirm it. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. If you want to get what belongs to you, then you must engage the force of vengeance. You must engage the force of... We wrote a book, The Force of Vengeance. How many of you have a copy of that book? You don't have a copy, you are not here born again. 
<laughs> you are born again in Jesus' name. <laughs> Remember, you should have a copy of that book. Is that true? To be able to understand how to operate in this wicked world. You can't, you can't operate in this wicked world with gentle Christianity. It will never work. It will never work. So I hear. But when it comes to... Yeah, the vengeance precedes comfort. No vengeance, no comfort. Even if your name is comfort, it does not mean you'll be comforted without vengeance. And you are the one to enforce what? To provoke God to take vengeance. One intimidating force that Satan will never like is vengeance. Is what? Vengeance is what provokes God to act in our favor. What is vengeance? Vengeance is extreme and intense punishment inflicted on anyone for a wrong done, whether in the secret or open. God sees as righteousness. He sees vengeance as righteous. He says the righteous thing we go to the compare tribulation to them that trouble of Second Thessalonians one six. So if you are not in vengeance, you are righteous. It is unrighteousness if you refuse to invoke vengeance against all forms of wickedness troubling you. It is a righteous thing. So those who say I don't believe in vengeance, you are righteous. I didn't say so. The Bible says so. So it's our duty. It's my duty to invoke vengeance, and I will do it. You hear me? To enjoy all round comfort, vengeance is inevitable. Isaiah 61, 1 to 2. My brody, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach the good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the open of prison to them that are bound. <coughs> Excuse me. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that. So you can't be comforted with that word? Vengeance. If you know that scripture, you read subsequent verses, you discover that every good thing came after vengeance was done. Is that clear, sir? May every form of mourning end your life now. You agree we enjoy comfort as a commission because of vengeance. Because of what? He said, they shall increase and he said, thou shall increase my greatness and comfort me on every side. Psalm 71, verse 21. God's plan is to increase our greatness and grant us comfort in what? Not some on every side. Do you know every time God leaves you, Satan is angry? Mm-hmm. To stop the woo woo woo, you must engage in vengeance. You need vengeance to enjoy all around comfort. You must clear your position as to enjoy promotion. If you want to enjoy promotion, you must clear what? Every opposition. Today, every opposition will clear. Yeah. Now, if you don't know the purpose of a thing, why do you need vengeance? Why do we need... Can't we just live our Christianity just like that? Because some people, when they say vengeance, they say, now, 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 now. God, will, God say we take vengeance. Thank you. God said, I've come down to deliver you. You didn't come down. <laughs> okay, God said, we'll prosper you. Have you prospered now? <laughs> now God says, it is not me. You enforce it. Who will enforce it? It's you. God said, we well, vengeance. I leave it to the hand of God. God will, God will never do anything if you don't do something. God said, you'll be the head. Are you the head now? You can only be the head when you enforce it. Are you getting me now? Every promise of God will be contested by the devil. Why do we need vengeance, number one? To enjoy exemption from evil. To enjoy what? In Exodus chapter 8, 22 to 24, the plague was there. But it didn't affect the children of Israel because they dwell in Goshen. Today, by this vengeance, God will fight sin and unseen battles for us. He will exempt us from all evils in the name of Jesus. Today, whatever is happening in the country where you are, you'll be exempted. If you really believe it, that amen will show. Amen. Listen, you'll be exempted. <laughs> There's hardship in the land, you will never be a victim. Amen. The time you'll be more blessed will be now. Amen. I'm speaking to someone who will be listening. The time God will bless you when others are complaining will be now. Amen. You'll be more blessed now than ever before. Amen. That amen will confirm a testimony. Why do we need vengeance, number two? To forcefully transfer the wealth of our enemies to us. 
to falsely what? Transfer the wealth of our enemies. Anytime God takes vengeance, it transfers wealth of our enemies to us. Now, example, the wealth of Egypt was transferred to Israel after vengeance. After what? That's what chapter 3, verse 21. He said, I'll give you favor in the sight of the Egyptians that when they go, shall not go empty. God did not allow Israel to leave Egypt empty. Today, I decree, everybody again, child, yelling the sound of a voice, something will shift to you in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Another example, some example B, the wealth of the three nations was transferred to Judah. If you read Second Chronicles chapter 20, 1 to 4, 7, 12, 15, 20 to 23, they were guarding and packing and 24. They were just packing for three days. How many days? The whole world of sinners will come to us if we say amen. amen. Oh, that amen is weak. Amen. I'm decreeing to someone right now, wealth will come your way. Amen. You will gather up to 25. If you read up to 25, wealth will come your way. Amen. You will enter your season of rest. Amen. The louder your amen, you have it done. was transferred. They were guarding wealth. Why do we need wealth? Vengeance number three. To fulfill God's purpose for our life, for, for your life. Fulfill God's purpose for your what? God created you to fulfill his purpose. Hope you know. Until vengeance is executed in your favor, his plan for your life will not be fulfilled. Now listen. <laughs> do you know vision can be delayed? You didn't hear me. If vengeance is not on display, Vision can be what? Some of you, God has told you to do something. Forces have resisted you from fulfilling them. Listen. <laughs> Read your Bible. Israel was to stay for 400 years, not 430. When God spoke to Abraham, he said, your seed shall be in a strange land for 400 years. True? But they stayed 430 years. That means, after 400 years, they were supposed to leave Egypt. But they said, start what? So if you God told you certain things that has been delayed to now, you know that this thing God told you but some forces are resisting the fulfillment. Are you getting what I'm talking about? Pharaoh delayed them for extra 30 years. They had to cry. They had to what? For vengeance. Look, listen. Maru That God says something does not mean that it will happen if you don't do something. Let me read for those who don't know the Bible. If not, I don't need to read all the scriptures. Exodus 3, 7 to 9. And Exodus 12, 40 to 42. And Lord said, see, listen, listen. So those of you who are religious. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people, which are in Egypt. Is it God speaking? And I've heard their cry by reason of their tax master. For I, I, I what? For I know their sorrows. And I'm come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians. He said, I'm come down. Who's speaking? He didn't come down, no. He still used the Moses. And that's a God go to him. It's a stupid prayer. God saying it, and human vessel must be used. He said, I am come down, this is God speaking, to deliver out of Jesus and to bring them out of the land onto a good land and a large, a land flowing with milk and honey. Onto the place of so 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 the size and the size and size. Now, therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me. And I've seen their oppression where with the Egyptians were oppressed. Now, the sojourning of children of Israel who dwell in Egypt was 430 years. With me, they spent their salary what? And it came to pass. At the end of 430 years, even the same same thing came to pass that all the hosts of the Lord went out of the land of Egypt for the two finally. It is a line to be much observed unto the Lord for bringing them out of the land of Egypt. This is that night of the Lord to be observed of all the children of Israel in their generation. And Exodus chapter 4, 22, 23. Now I'm going somewhere. Please get yourself set. And thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, God was speaking to Moses. He said, I'm come down, but he had to use Moses. So I'm speaking not on my own. I'm speaking the word of God. Thus saith the Lord. He was quoting the Bible. Israel is my son, even my firstborn. <laughs> my son to thee, this is Moses speaking. Let my son go that he may serve me. Are you serving God? Yes, Are you serving God? Yes, and if thou refuse to let him go, behold, I will slay that. So, even the firstborn. Did God slay them? Yes, 
Now I decree whatever is delaying any purpose of God for your life shall be destroyed now. God has said, this must happen. Then forces are standing. I stand in my office. I decree any force resisting the fulfillment of any purpose of God for our life be judged now. All the demons, all the forces resisting the fulfillment of God's purpose for any of us in the name of Jesus, I command them judge now. If there be any human agent who has stood to resist you, I command everything they've done against you, go back to sender. Amen. I've not seen people who lay foundation and cannot finish houses for, for years. I've not seen people who say they, they, they told them they would get married and then the marriage seems to be like a mirage. God has told you you'll be a great man and somebody's standing. Not today. Every purpose of God for your life that has been delayed shall be met with judgment in the name of Jesus. Today shall be your day of liberty. It shall be to your day of glorious liberty. Your freedom out of Egypt is established now. You are walking out gallantly in the name of Jesus. The yoke is broken. The net is broken. You will escape now. Your freedom is now. Any agent of the devil. Who has vowed to torment any of us? I decree before 6 p.m. today they go down. Before 6 p.m. today they go down. In the name of Jesus. So I'm walking out. God's purpose for my life must be accomplished. Say it in faith. No force can stop it. In the name of Jesus. Shout a better amen. Amen. Shout it loud, amen. amen. If Moses could say, let my people go, and God confirmed it, I'm greater than Moses. Yes, I decree you must go out of that challenge. Amen. You must walk out of that challenge. Amen. Your freedom shall be right now. Amen. Walk into your destiny. Amen. You believe it, let your amen confirm it. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. I'll tell you hindrances to enjoying all around comfort through vengeance. Hindrances. What are the hindrances? I'll tell them in just five minutes. I'll be very fast with you so I can go into real practicals. Hindrances to enjoy all around comfort through what? Vengeance. Hindrances to enjoy all around comfort through vengeance. Number one is religion. Number one is what? Religion frustrates the power of God to manifest in your life. Please don't miss it. I please skip yours. All in the name of religion. All in the name of uh, if you are slapped on this cheek, turn to that one to be slapped. Matthew 5.39. <laughs> Please, you must balance scriptures. Though. God knows that they slap you are turned here. That scripture is deeper than what you are talking about. Are you hearing me now? You must balance scriptures. He said, from the days of John, can you help us? Sorry, what? Matthew 11.12. And if I like take it, he said, they made the word of God of none effect. Life story. I was teaching on vengeance. And a woman came to me and said, Sir, because of our background of religion, don't you think that this kind of preaching is not too good? Allow God, our mother killer. Our mother known witch. Everybody knows the mother as a witch. But she does not believe in vengeance. The mother struck her and she was the breadwinner of the house. She died at the airport in Canada. She stepped into the airport. She collapsed and died. Our own brothers say, my sister will never believe that my mother is a bad woman. So my mother hit her first. She was a breadwinner. Listen, leave your religion home. He says, suffer not a witch to live. He says, they say, God, say, make we leave witches. Where are you for your Bible? Please leave your, in case you get from religious background, leave it to, there are brothers who, who stop their own brothers from progressing. Are you hearing me? Cain and Abel were blood brothers. You don't have to do bad things for people to hate you. My only that anybody who hates me, you are in trouble. What are, you, are you getting what I'm talking about? Glory to God. Second hindrance is lack of boldness. Lack of what? To declare God's word. Some of you are even afraid to say somebody should die. You say, I don't like that kind of prayer. God, if you kill them, kill them once more. <laughs> 
What kind of prayer is that? What kind of prayer? <laughs> Vengeance can only be enjoyed by the fearless. Thou shalt decree it in and it shall be established unto thee. Job 22 28. Don't keep your mouth shut in the face of challenges. The word of God is the sword of the spirit. Ephesians 6 verse 17. It says, Shabbat a two headed sword. Hebrews 4 verse 12. You see, the doctor, if that shall say to this man to be down, and you don't doubt in your heart, Mark 11 to 3. What's where you bind on that shall be bound in heaven? Open your mouth. Why? David said to Goliath, Shut your circumstances, Philistine. That's how to talk. Today, as you open your mouth, God will confirm every word. Yeah. Turn the hindrance is sin. Turn it as what? You can't be taking vengeance. Then after we finish service now, you go to one witch doctor. Don't mix the two. God is a jealous God. Don't finish service now. With this kind of one service, then you now go to one white garment man. What do you talk? Then the calling bell. Bangai. Bangai on your head. On your own head. My friends, my first, I can't go to those places. God is not there. I can tell you. I know why God brought me out from there to, pre, to become born again. He wanted me to see the two. I'm like Moses. So you see me while I talk like that? Don't think I, I am like Moses. I saw everything there. God is not there. So if you have to have this kind of hot service, you will go and look here, look here, look here, enter one place. You see, you see, what did they shock? What did they shock? Prophet, what did they talk? Then prophet will look at you. I, I she, I she. Well, I don't know if she saw the way you know. <laughs> when you use your own leg, you use your leg, I can't go there. I see. You should go there when you are not born again, not after being born again. So of us walk out to those places when we are not born again. See, I've never born again. I've never walked out to such places. How can you walk out with your leg? Walk out into such places. After being born again. After what I'm going to call surrender. <laughs> it flows some, some people. Some people after being born again, you surprise. Mix the two. They say, Papa, it's a people you see. <laughs> so you want what do you want? Is this seeing or solving problem? Someone tell you you have cancer. Is that a someone who pray for you to cancer to go, which one is better? Someone see finish, you know if you do anything. And this part of the world will like sheen. We like what? <laughs> People say the man can shoe. Okay, since when she for you, I say solve your problem. Eh? Just imagine that boy who came now. And now I start telling him the accident was caused by your uncle. Your uncle caused the accident. It's your uncle. He said it's you after seeing all those things, the boy now can't go back like it's a pain. <laughs> pain. pain. What, of what use is the uncle? Command the thing to go. But we live in a society of deception. Please, in case you are like that, you hinder your vengeance, so surrender. All those small small things they gave you to put on your tongue, to put on your eye when you look more like this. <laughs> your mother told you, you shall look at any man, the man will forget to go sign check for you. <laughs> those things, they have their repercussions, so they won't tell you. If the witch doctor we used to get money, why did he not get money for himself? He will not tell you the consequences of such. Satan does not give anything free. You get money from man, you take cancer. You go give him money, you give him cancer. So when he get to 55, he say cancer. Cancer. Because you collected money. No free thing from devil. We go soon, all free. <laughs> Are you hearing that? So all those shit and shit things, they make you vulnerable. You see that break at the end, someone shall bite him, may not be beaten. Ecclesiastes 10 verse 8b. It says, sit not in the castle of the on God is one verse one. Then four hindrance is prayerlessness. Is what? You must pray without ceasing to take charge. Prayerlessness. First Thessalonians 5, five seventeen says pray without what? Season. Luke eighteen verse one. Men ought always to pray. Some of you know prayer. In a wicked world, you don't pray. You just enter out of the car. God will be protecting me. God will protect me. God will pray. Hey hey hey. hey. Check any day you had serious attack. You didn't pray. No prayer. Jump. Bam. Bam. I'm going for contract. These are some of the hindrances. Are you ready to pray now? Rise to your feet. Let's go to business. Prayer point one. In Zechariah chapter 1, 18 to 21. 
Then said I, what come this to do? And he speaks saying, these are the horns which have scattered Judah. So that no man did lift up what? He said, nobody could lift up his head. He said, but I've come to free them for time's sake. I have come to destroy those forces that did not allow anybody to lift their head. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's what the scripture says. I've come to destroy them. You are going to pray using the name of Jesus. At his name every name, what? Philippians 2.10. Of things in heaven, of things in earth, and things under the... Of things in heaven, of things in earth, and things under the earth. You are going to use the name of Jesus Christ to destroy any obstacle limiting your progress in life. He said, what, he said if that shall say to this man, everything standing to resist me in the name of Jesus, I cast you out. I establish an unhindered progress over all that concerns me. I come against you. He said, my name shall cast out devil. So it's not visible fight. He used the name of Jesus without understanding. I come against that foul spirit tormenting me from not making progress in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and pray that prayer. Use the name of Jesus and cast out at them. In Jesus' mighty name. In Psalm 65, verse 11, the dark kindness the year with her goodness and her power drop fatness. Ephesians 3, verse 20, God is now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above what I can ask or think. Is that through according to the power that worketh in us? Ephesians 3, verse 20, decree that the remaining days of this year will be the best. Will be what? Yes. And all your expectations shall be granted and exceeded by God. Lord, the many days of this year will be the best. Go ahead in the name of Jesus. Jesus, mighty name. Take the oil in your hands. After David was anointed, the Spirit of God came upon him from that day forward. Every oil in your hands seems to be another oil. The same Holy Ghost that is a comfort that rests upon that oil in the name of Jesus. He said, I have found David, my son, my holy oil, have I anointed him. Psalm 89, verse 20. With whom my hand shall be established. The enemy shall not desire upon him, not instead of wickedness, I'll flit him. I'll beat down his foot for his face and plague them that hate him. Now in the name of Jesus, Psalm 82, 89, 20 to 23, become a fulfillment in someone's life. Yeah. God will beat down anyone that is after our lives. Yeah. The wicked shall bow before the righteous. Yeah. They will crawl and destroy themselves. He said, my ear shall hear this upon my enemies. I don't allow them against me. Whatever you want, when you declare it, it will be so in the name of Jesus. 
He said, touch not my anointing, I do my prophet no harm. May the seal of the Holy Ghost, according to Ephesians 1.13 and Psalm 105, 13 to 15. It says, they went from, as you travel from one place to another, from one kingdom to another, you allow them to the Lord, I said, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. I decree every anointed to be a touch not. God said he has anointed the court of the house of wickedness with the house of Ahab. 2 Chronicles 22 verse 7. After this anointing, every wickedness will come to an end. Shout a loud amen. amen. Shout a believing amen. amen. When vengeance takes place, good things come. Everything stopping your blessing, the Holy Ghost will take vengeance against it. Amen. <laughs> he said to comfort all that more. I declare the name of Jesus. The anointing of the Holy Ghost this hour will destroy every yoke. The yoke of stagnation. The yoke of delay. The yoke of barrenness. The yoke of failure. The yoke of poverty. The yoke of shame. Every yoke shall be destroyed. In the name of Jesus. Blessings shall flow. Favor shall flow. Abundance shall flow. In the name of Jesus. So me, O God of vengeance. Over to you. I call on you. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Right now. As this oil touches me. Let everyone planning evil. Against my life and destiny. Be destroyed. be destroyed. The same oil the same of the Holy Spirit set me at liberty. Now, anything you say, that's how I will confirm. Begin to anoint yourself in the name of Jesus and pray for yourself in the name of Jesus. Pray for yourself in the name of Jesus. The yoke is destroyed. Every form of captivity will be turned. My liberty is established. My liberty is established. Open your mouth wide. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. I will speak by my own testimony and I pray for you. We had to travel on Sunday and we said, okay, let's just go to an hotel, my wife and I, and eat. And after eating, we go to the airport. A member flew from his station to Lagos to fly to Polaco because the roads are bad. To come and see me because he wanted me to go and dedicate a church he built in the village. So he told them he wants to come, but he cannot drive by road because the roads are terrible. Now, in Lagos, he was staying in the same hotel. He had no idea. We were going to the airport just for us to rest for some few hours and leave for the journey. He just walked into us. He said, Ah, Papa, it's you that brought me to this hotel so I can fly to see him for that God. See me here. Now, I won't tell you that side of the story. <laughs> but the footsteps of the righteous are ordered by God. Favor will locate you where you never expect. <laughs> what would have you would have gone looking for after this day? No matter where you are, it will locate you. 
I decree and I declare whatever you would have run for to begin to look for will come to where you are and look for you. In Jesus' mighty name. I laughed with my wife. I said, this kind of thing is strange. Inside this kind of place we are eating, favor still came. Favor will be your name. Now, but if you are not born again, pray this prayer after me. Say after me, Lord Jesus. If you are not born again, remember, God can't take vengeance for you when you are still in Egypt. Say after me, Lord Jesus. I've come to you. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I believe in my heart that you died and rose to save me. Thank you, Father, for saving me. In Jesus' mighty name. If you offer that prayer, keep standing or let's take your seats.